Today, let's learn the story behind this famous cold cream on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Theron Tilden Pond was born in New York in 1800. This is a picture that I saw shared throughout Ancestry.com for him. Whether it's actually a portrait of him, I couldn't tell you. His lineage stays in Connecticut as far back as the early 1600s. The Pond family is one of the earliest settlers in Connecticut, and they're found in the book called North American Families. Pond was born in 1800 and he died in 1852, so he did not live very long, and his life is not well documented. We do know he was married to Sarah and that they had four kids. Two of them died as babies. I found two newspaper articles where he's mentioned. They're from 1832, where he took to the newspaper to notify the public that a Sunday school book library had opened, and he's mentioned at the bottom of the article as Theron T. Pond, agent of the American Sunday School Union. This video is gonna be less about him and more about his legacy. Pond was a pharmacist in Utica, New York. About 1846, so he was about 46 years old, he extracted the bark of witch hazel and he concocted a salve and discovered that it could actually heal small cuts. He named it Golden Treasure. Apparently it was very popular, but I couldn't find any pictures of this golden treasure. Three years later, in 1849, just a couple years before he died, the T.T. Pond Company was formed in New York with Pond and a few of his buddies, Alexander Hart and Edmund Munson. Soon after, he ended up selling his portion of the company because of his failing health. He died in 1852, not reaching his 52nd birthday. His two business partners continued selling the product as Pond's Extract. Now, Pond's Extract looked like this, so we're not talking about the cold creams yet. This was a medicine used for all kinds of skin issues. It was advertised as a household remedy used for minor scratches or other ailments. I see it was even used for aftershave. Here's an ad talking about helping sore throats, earaches, all kinds of things. Hey, maybe it can help me stop being so lame. <laughs> Here's what some of those old bottles look like. And I thought this was just a really cute ad. Soon after Pond died, the company name was changed from T.T. Pond Company to Pond's Extract Company. And in the 1870s, they moved to Connecticut because witch hazel was more abundant there. They kept needing to move to bigger and bigger buildings to accommodate the rapid growth. In 1929 is when they built this huge three-story 77,000 square foot building in Clinton, Connecticut, which still stands. They did still operate out of New York though. In 1886, Pons began to advertise nationally. Almost 50 years after Pond discovered his extract, about the year 1904, the company introduced Pond's cold cream and Pond's vanishing cream. By 1910, they were focusing on promoting just these creams, and they were using celebrities to promote it. Here's Gloria Vanderbilt's mom. Her name was also Gloria Vanderbilt. They began to advertise Pond's Vanishing Cream and Pond's Cold Cream together, making sure to explain each cream's different purposes. One particular ad says, every normal skin needs these two creams. As a result of this new campaign, sales for both of these creams increased dramatically. In 1923, Queen Marie of Romania visited the United States and she enjoyed the products so much that in 1925, she wrote to the Pons company requesting more supplies. Her letter was then used in their advertisements. By the mid 20s, early 30s, they were introducing many new products like cleaning tissues and cosmetics, powders and lipsticks. As World War II broke out, women had to step in and take over men's jobs as they went to war. The demanding work forced women's hands and skin to take a beating. Pond's ads says that 
Pond's cold creams and Pond's vanishing creams will continue to help them retain their grace, softness, and femininity in these stressful new roles. 1955, Pond's company was merged with Chesabrew Manufacturing Company. Robert Chesabrew was the dude who invented Vaseline, and he built quite an empire for himself before he died. His story is interesting too, and I've got his video scheduled soon. About 30 years after Pons merged with Chesabrew, they were acquired by Unilever, and that's who produces their products today. I found two of my Pons containers. I'm sure I've got more laying around somewhere. Anybody who collects bottles has tons of these. You'll find that most of the milk glass that you come across held some type of cosmetic or toiletry item. Not always, but it's fairly common. I have a regular size one, and my trial size one has the original lid still. It's stuck on pretty tight, and I'm not going to try too hard to get that off. It does say Pons on the lid, and Pons is on the bottom of both of them. They both have a unique shape, which I'd say is the shape of an eye. It looks like this shape was used in the 40s and 50s ads. I'm having a hard time finding specifically 30s ads, so I'm not sure if this shape was used during the 30s. But here's one from 1927, and so it seems like the earlier ones were a little bit more square shaped. And that's about it for today, guys. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.